This episode is sponsored by Jed's extremely sensitive hearing aids and acoustic solutions. Find them off Junction 32, next to the Screech Owl Sanctuary. You know, people are always asking us questions. What are you doing? When are you leaving? Are those my shoes? And usually we've got very little interest in answering. But today we find ourselves with a bit of time on our hands, don't we? We do. Yeah, so I thought we could answer a few of the queries that you've sent in to us. So first up, Barry Gravel from Meatsworth asks, What have you been up to recently? Well, Barry, I actually got up to about three foot six at the beginning of the week, but I realised I was standing on the kerb, and then when I stepped back down again, I was still three foot four. I think possibly he's asking how we've been occupying our time of late. Oh, I see. Oh, well, you know, just staying in, not getting up to much. How about you? Uh, the reason why we haven't been getting out as much as we would like to recently, and uh, this was bound to get out eventually. Oh no! But since March of this year, Sally Forth has been under house arrest. It's true. Your criminal past finally caught up with you, Indeed. and some of the things that you were saying has uh, have landed you in some rather hot water. Well, what can I say? I wear my heart on my sleeve. And now you wear that bracelet on your ankle too. Oh no! Yeah, it's true. It all came to a head earlier in the year, but it's, the thing is, the most important thing is that I've looked at myself in the mirror, I've stared myself in the face, and I've forgiven myself, even if other people can't quite bring themselves to do so. Yeah, well, that's a minor thing. Well, it was a minor offence. Hmm, but not your first. Next question, then. What is your fondest memory, asks? scavenger of look. I would have to say the time I lived amongst the Slogonian people of the Uncanny Valley. I was lost in the jungle when the Slogonian found me. Although nervous at first, they brought me into their community where I studied their ways, participated in their strange ceremonies, and eventually became a respected member of their community. Looking back on it now, I can say it really was a very memorable afternoon. What are your fondest memories? Mm. Oh, it was lovely. It was covered in icing with a cream filling and a marzipan base. Oh, oh, I thought, I thought you said what's my fondant memory? Oh, oh fondest memory? Mm. Well, I thought I saw a unicorn once, but it turned out just to be a cow and a party hat. Moving on, Janice Cleft of Bilge writes in to ask, a lot of people are taking up gardening recently. Do you have green fingers? Well, Janice, yes, I do. That's a completely different condition, which we'll just put aside for one moment. Uh, do I like gardening? Yes, I've been mostly, mostly just trying to grow things indoors, haven't I? Eh, putting miracle Grow in Hobman's tea, that sort of thing. I would love to plant vegetables, but... Our dog does his business at the end of the garden. Uh, we don't mean defecation. He runs a small accountancy firm out of a shed. Yeah, he's very thorough. But you do need to adjust his hourly rate to take into account dog years. Next question then. What was your favourite subject at school? Wonders Toby Grain of Mumble. I'll handle this one. Uh, pseudoscience. That was the one for me. I actually ended up getting a BS in the subject. I was more into geography, you know, that's why I never get lost. I actually have an SOS in disorienteering. Mm. How do you stay fit and healthy, wonders Meredith Broms of Slope. Well, Meredith, I like to do mental gymnastics, which I do in my mental gymnasium, which I've populated largely with hunks who all stand around and cheer and clap while I do handstands and backflips and forward rolls. I'm very good at all of those things in my head. I do a lot of stretching. Uh, it has to be said mostly out of necessity, because everything I want is tantalisingly out of my reach. It does keep my shoulders supple, though. I also do a lot of crunches, but that's because my new hip was a hand-me-down. Next question then. Darren from Cringe writes, who would you invite to a dinner party? 
Please answer in your own words. Hmm, my own words, huh? Uh, Fepwe, Fang Crevitas, Mega Wang Woe, Sick a Hip, Trow Trow, Mega Waka Woo. It's harder than it looks making up your own language. That's very good. Thanks. OK, and let's go on to our next question. What are the top three things to do in Oblivia? Writes Deborah from Schmeckles. Well, Debs, top of my list has got to be the wishing well. A bunch of well, wishy-washy well wishes gather together to all wish we had a well. There is the annual running of the tap. Efforts to modernise Oblivia's plumbing faltered after the installation of our one and only standpipe. So, to celebrate every year, we turn on the tap and all gather to sing the national anthem. Oh, Oblivia, we leave ya. Turn off that tap before it becomes a rivia. Oh, Oblivia, oh, Oblivia, you better like it or I'm gonna shave ya. And if you're visiting in the summer, you have to check out Gurning Man. Oh, it's great. Although we turned our noses up at it at first, didn't we? Which way that we won? <laughs> yeah. You should have seen the look on her face. Uh, OK, next question from Mary Balm of Slope, who asks, What book are you reading? I think it was The Fog, but my memory is a bit hazy. Uh, I'm writing my own book, Mary, on how to overcome procrastination. Are you still writing that? Yeah, well, I'll get round to finishing it one day. What are you doing to help the environment, inquires Mark Crust from Cheam. Well, Mark, I've actually started Sally Force Wildlife Preserves. She gathers up all the bad carnivore species so they can't eat all the good animals, and then she turns them all into jam. I, on the other hand, have been gathering up all of the old tyres that I find by the side of the road and I burn them all in a big fire. Now well, let's have another question then. This one from Kenny Blimp of the Rusk, who asks, How would you describe your relationship? Ah, I like to think of myself as Sally's rock. Yeah, my gallstone. I'm a sounding board. Yes, and my punching bag. I'm her right-hand man. My vestigial limb. OK, next question. Carol Beard of Smarm wants to know, do you have any hobbies? Sally is always encouraging me to take up hobbies. Yeah, I just want you to get out of the house. I don't really care what you do after that. Oh. I tried fly fishing. I never caught many, and after a while I asked myself, why would I want to catch flies anyway? Yeah, they do not taste nice, and the bait smells awful. Whew. Then I tried to take up whittling, but Sally doesn't allow me to have any sharp implements. So after six months, my walking stick still looks an awful lot like a two by four. Mm. There's a lot to learn with wood carving. Even after trying for half a year, I still really feel like I'm just scratching the surface. I took up magic, but Hobman accidentally broke my conjuring set. So now all my illusions are shattered. OK, let's have another question then from Roy Grog of Winnerish Triangle, who asks, Do you know any games for a rainy afternoon? Sally particularly likes mind games, her favourite being pretending that I've turned invisible and she can't hear anything that I'm saying. She can keep that up for hours. She really does seem to enjoy it. Mr. P.E. Peanut of Shoeberry Dis put pen to paper to ask the following. What are you watching? Neighbours. Yeah, I mean, not the programme. Um, Kathy and Bert next door. You could call it watching. I mean, you could call it spying. The judge called it peeping. But we have been keeping a close eye on them. You know, it's been a disgusting revelation to see how some people live. The things they get up to on a Thursday afternoon. I've been keeping a close eye on the rest of the street. As the founding member of my own neighbourhood watch scheme, my duties include fist shaking, loud tutting, and dobbing in anyone whose jib I don't like the cut of. As a result, I've also been watching my back. Two, three. 
feral twigs from shore, writes, Sally, what is your recipe for your famous tripe and spine pudding? Uh, th- that's Beryl. No, Beryl, you're not going to get me that easily. Mm, that's Beryl from the uh, parish fate. She always comes second place to Sally in the village bake-off every year. Always sniffing around, trying to find out my recipes. Well, I'm never going to give you my secret, Beryl. And don't you go sending little Jimmy Spuds round to help me with my cooking. Because I know a mole when I see one, and it is as big and obvious as the one on your face. I tell you what, Beryl, you are going to be eating humble pie at the end of this year's Bake Off when I take the trophy home for the fifth year running. Well, my loves, we have really enjoyed answering your interesting questions with our even more interesting answers. But we didn't actually ask permission to film here, and I do think the owners are home Yeah, they're now. home. They are. That's the light, isn't it? Okay. Bye, everybody. Okay. Bye. Quick. Go, go, go. Quick. 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 Quick.